so welcome back to hepatitis viruses uh, sessions and in this session we are going to talk about the pathogenicity of hepatitis virus now obviously the pathogenicity is uh, inflammation of liver that is known as hepatitis now let's see the first uh, epidemiology aspect of it Now, <clears throat> pathogenicity caused by hepatitis A virus is known as infectious hepatitis or it is sometimes also known as enterically transmitted hepatitis. Same way, the hepatitis E virus, uh, it is also enterically transmitted and it is uh, called as non-A, non-B enterically transmitted hepatitis. The hepatitis B virus, it causes a serum hepatitis. Hepatitis C virus causes non-A, non-B post-transfusion hepatitis. And uh, hepatitis D virus itself uh, cannot do any kind of pathogenicity. But whenever it is associated with hepatitis B infection, either simultaneously or that is co-infection or super-infection. So whenever there is a co-infection of a hepatitis B virus with HDV, then it causes acute hepatitis, while in case of uh, super infection, um, it causes chronic hepatitis. Now the prevalence uh, data is in front of you, and as you can see that hepatitis A and B have very high prevalence, uh, followed by hepatitis C virus, and uh, HDV and HEV, they have regional prevalen uh, prevalences. That means, for example, hepatitis E virus is uh, very uh, rare in uh, Western countries. Now, if we talk about the route of transmission, then it is the uh, ingestion of uh, food and water which is contaminated by fecal material in case of hepatitis A virus. Same goes for hepatitis E virus, that is ingestion of uh, drinking water by fecal contamination and hepatitis b c and d as you can see uh, they can be transmitted via blood uh, sexual route or from mother to fetus that is a vertical transmission now as you can see that perinatal transmission or vertical transmission the risk is highest with hepatitis b virus uh, followed by hepatitis d and uh, c uh, all are exclusively human infection except uh, you can find an animal reservoir in case of hepatitis E virus. Uh, secondary attack rate is very high uh, in case of hepatitis A virus that is 10 to 20 percent while it is just 1 to 2 percent in case of hepatitis E virus. Seasons uh, in temperate countries the hepatitis uh, A virus is uh, causing hepatitis A is usually found in winters but in India, both A and E, they are found very commonly post-monsoon. Um, so the first uh, picture that you can see on the this one is uh, acute hepatitis, uh, inflammation of liver there. And there is one clue which is written that it is usually spread through contaminated water. So it is basically hepatitis E virus. The person is a young adult. The second picture that is a child eating a food from the street and then it uh, has caused the uh, acute hepatitis in him. So acute hepatitis in children by fecal contamination of food and water that is hepatitis A virus. Then followed by B, C and D uh, which are transmitted by blood. Now we think that HIV viruses usually uh, when we say about uh, blood transmissibility infections but actually hepatitis b virus is very uh, infectious uh, or very highly infectious compared to hepatitis, uh, human immunodeficiency virus even uh, the 0 0.0001 ml blood uh, is infectious if we talk about perinatal transmission risk, uh, as i've already told you the maximum risk is with hepatitis b virus but this risk uh, uh, is too much increased if mother is HBE antigen positive. Uh, it, then risk is up 
up to 90%. But if mother is HBE antigen negative, then the risk is just 15%. So hepatitis B virus is the most common hepatitis virus that is transmitted perinatally, right? And uh, what will decide uh, that uh, how much is the risk is the presence of hepatitis B E antigen. And uh, most common time of this transmission is usually at the time of delivery uh, or during labor. And most common presentation in neonate because neonate are immunosuppressed, uh, they usually turn into asymptomatic uh, carriers. So let us look at some questions. Uh, Non-parenteral hepatitis is, so we know that oh, non-parenteral is only A and E. So obviously the answer here is hepatitis A. Which virus uh, or which hepatitis virus has significant perinatal transmission? Uh, now you know that it is the hepatitis B virus which has the maximum risk. Now we have to find a true statement about hepatitis E virus in this question. And as you can see that there are five options given. Uh, let us uh, start from the uh, first one that it is found in rodent and pigs. Now this is a true statement because all hepato, uh, hepatitis virus, uh, they are exclusive human infection except hepatitis E virus, which also has animal reservoirs like pigs and rodents. Um, let us look at other options also before uh, confirming our answer. A major cause of bloodborne hepatitis? No, hepatitis E virus is usually fecal uh, born. The cause of disease that resembles hepatitis C, no, that is totally wrong statement. Capable of establishing chronic infection, hepatitis A and E, they never causes uh, chronic infection. It is associated with increased risk of liver cancer, no. Uh, hepatitis A and E, they never causes the liver cancer. So obviously the answer is the A. In next session, uh, <coughs> we are going to talk about the pathophysiology of uh, some of these viruses for example the viruses <coughs> which enters via ingestion for example hepatitis A or E they multiply in local intestinal epithelium and then the virus first time enters into blood which is primary viremia then it goes into liver and it is shaded in uh, feces in late incubation period and prodromal phases once uh, jaundice or icterus develops, it is rarely detected in uh, feces. The hepatitis B virus, it is transmitted by parental route, so its direct entry into blood is considered to be as a primary viremia. Then it goes to liver, multiply there, and uh, in fact the hepatocytes. But the acute hepatitis or pathogenicity is always immune mediated. Virus infected cells when they are killed by a natural killer cell and uh, cytotoxic T cells uh, then uh, we develop inflammation of liver but if someone is immunosuppressed or for example infants or a Im person who is taking Im immunosuppressed medication then he will never suffer from uh, this acute hepatitis instead this virus uh, uh, will be there viral infection will be there but he will not show any kind of signs and symptoms of hepatitis. So this leads to a carrier state. We will talk about more about carrier state later on. Uh, what this uh, acute hepatitis uh, can lead to, either the person will recover in one to two months. In some cases, that is 0.5 to 2% cases, uh, there is uh, mortality. Uh, some people develop extra hepatic complications uh, like arthritis, uh, polyarthritis, nodosa, glomerulonephritis, and urticaria. And some people uh, uh, will develop the chronic infection in 1 to 2 percent cases. Now, from this chronic infection, uh, some of them can be just asymptomatic carriers, or some will develop either recurrent or chronic hepatitis. And this chronic hepatitis ultimately can. Uh, culminate into either cirrhosis or hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, talk about uh, the clinical features. So, if we take the age, uh, hepatitis B, C and D can happen at any age because they are parentally transmitted, sexually transmitted and vertically transmitted. Uh, but hepatitis A and E now this hepatitis A virus is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in children in India 
uh, in Western countries or in developed nations, uh, usually the young adults uh, they develop hepatitis A virus. Uh, in children, this infection is usually mild, but when it affects uh, the adults, the infection is very severe. On the contrary, the hepatitis E virus is the most common cause of uh, acute uh, sporadic hepatitis uh, in young adults, uh, that is 20 to 40 years of age. Now let us look at, uh, at incubation period. Now from this slide, you will definitely uh, have got an idea till now that uh, in uh, the incubation period for hepatitis A and E is uh, between 15 to 60 days while that for hepatitis B, C and D is approximately 30 to 180 days. Now if you talk about the onset, uh, hepatitis A and E, they always cause uh, acute hepatitis. Um, so their onset is always abrupt, while B, C and D, they have tend to have insidious onset. Talking about clinical features, 95% of hepatitis A infections are uh, asymptomatic. That means person will never show you any signs and symptoms. The 5% cases will become symptomatic in which the symptoms or signs starts with prodromal phase in which there are very uh, non-specific flu-like illnesses there, fever, body ache, nausea, vomiting, malaise. And as soon as the symptoms subside and uh, jaundice develops, then starts the icteric or uh, the jaundice stage. And person will recover very slowly in one to two months. Uh, hepatitis B virus has similar manifestations uh, like hepatitis A virus, but it is very severe. Uh, sometimes there is no fever. Uh, virus will be removed in one to two months. Uh, it may take some time, up to six months. Hepatitis C virus usually causes uh, very mild or sometimes anecteric, that means no jaundice like acute illness, only 5% cases may turn into over jaundice. So this may lead to lots of cases which are not detected at all. And, and HCV has a tendency to cause a chronic infection maximum. So this is a problematic area to detect or suspect hepatitis C virus infection. Hepatitis D virus infection, as we know that if it is a co-infection, it is usually acute hepatitis. Uh, ranging from severity from mild to fatal and if it is a super infection uh, with hepatitis B virus it usually culminates in chronic hepatitis. Hepatitis E virus is causing the similar illness just like hepatitis A virus but the disease gets very severe in case of pregnancy uh, in form of hepatic encephalopathy or fulminant hepatitis. If we talk about uh, Fulminant diseases or fulminant hepatitis, as you can see, this is very rare usually in case of A, B, and C viruses. But hepatitis D virus, especially where there is super infection with hepatitis B virus, this is uh, very common, 5 to 20 percent. Hepatitis E virus, usually it is again very rare, 1 to 2 percent. But if, as I earlier uh, said to you, that uh, pregnancy, uh, if lady is pregnant and she develops hepatitis E virus infection, especially in last trimester, then this uh, fulminancy rate can go up to 20 to 40 percent. Carrier state, uh, A and E never causes uh, any kind of carrier state. B, C and D, yes, they do um, make carriers. And hepatitis B virus has the maximum propensity to cause a carrier state, 0.1 to 30 percent followed by hepatitis C virus. If we talk about chronicity, and this I have earlier mentioned also that it, hepatitis C virus is the most common culprit to cause uh, chronic infection. A and E never cause any kind of chronic infection or cirrhosis. Oncogenic potential, again A and E are uh, uh, out of the list. B, C and D, uh, they usually cause the oncogenesis, especially hepatocellular carcinoma. And this is maximum in case of hepatitis B virus, uh, especially if it is a neonate whose mother was infected with hepatitis B virus. Autoimmune disorders, they are very common in hepatitis B, uh, C and uh, like uh, acute glomerulonephritis, polyarthritis, and all those are. so extra hepatic complications are very common. There are some autoantibodies like liver, uh, kidney, mitochondrial antibody, LKM1. 
uh, antibody which is found usually in hepatitis C virus. Uh, LKM3 antibody is usually found in hepatitis D virus infection. So if we talk about prognosis, uh, obviously the recovery is definite in case of A and E. So their prognosis is always good. Uh, D, if it is a co-infection, it is a good prognosis. If it is a chronic uh, super in, uh, infection with hepatitis B virus, then it is poor prognosis. But the worst prognosis, and it becomes worse with as age progresses, that is hepatitis B virus followed by hepatitis C virus. Now, let us look at a carrier rate of hepatitis B virus infection. And then as you can see that as age group uh, goes down the carrier rate increases why because in adults it is 10 percent in children it is 30 percent and in neonates the carrier rate goes up to 90 percent and because they are immunosuppressed if a person is immunosuppressed he will uh, not show signs and symptoms because pathogenicity is immune mediated instead that person will turn into a carrier worldwide the hepatitis b virus in fact approximately 350 million people and out of this 45 million resides in india uh, talking about carriers, there are two types of hepatitis B virus carriers, super carriers and simple carriers. Now, what is the difference? The difference is that, that super carriers will have very high infectivity. So, the antigens, uh, they are very high or they are always present in case of super carriers like hepatitis B surface antigen, hepatitis B E antigen and HBV DNA polymerase. Let us look at some questions. A young pregnant woman presents with fulminant hepatic failure. The pregnancy and hepatic failure, obviously the answer should be E. Pregnant woman presents with hepatic encephalopathy. Again, uh, you know that answer is hepatitis E virus. During epidemic of hepatitis E, the fatality is maximum in? Yes, it is again pregnant women. Maternal mortality is highest in case of uh, obviously it is hepatitis e yes chronic liver disease is caused by now we have to choose the best option uh, though b and c both causes carrier state a and e never causes carrier state but between b and c which one has more propensity to cause chronic liver disease yes the answer is c Which of the following acute viral hepatitis infection has highest risk of progression to chronicity? Which hepatitis virus is notorious for chronic, uh, causing chronic hepatitis evolving into cirrhosis? The answer is hepatitis C virus. Which hepatitis virus has poorest prognosis? Now we know that A has very good prognosis. Non A, non B, it is a very vague term. It also includes hepatitis E virus. So that does not have any poor prognosis. So we are left with B and C. So if I have to choose between B and C, I will go for hepatitis B virus. Hepatitis B virus is associated with all of the following. Now this is the, uh, again a good question. Uh, as you can see, hepatitis B virus can cause hepatocellular carcinoma. So option A is correct. It can also cause chronic hepatitis. So option B is also correct. Uh, hepatic adenoma, it never causes uh, a very uh, the evidences are for HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma. Hepatic adenoma, it is a benign tumor and cirrhosis. So obviously the answer is hepatic adenoma. In next session, uh, we will look at the laboratory diagnosis of hepatitis uh, viruses.